how do you want to act to advocate uh, for a change in, in, in connection to the climate? Hello, everybody, and thanks so much for joining us for another episode of our one-on-one -on -one interview series. Today, I'm joined by Sarah Tim. Sarah, if you want to introduce yourself. Yeah, hello, everyone. My name is Sarah Tim. I'm the Director of Education at Maine Maritime Museum in Bath, Maine. Excellent. Thank you for joining us. So, Sarah, you're the Director of Education at the Maine Maritime Museum. What role did you play in this new Sea Change exhibit you guys have up? Absolutely. So Sea Change, um, Darkness and Light in the Gulf of Maine, the full title, opened up in February at Maine Maritime Museum of this year. And I was here at the beginning of the process, which was over a year ago, where we met with the Gulf of Maine Eco Arts team, which is the creative team behind the exhibit, because uh, this is an immersive art installation that kind of tackles the subject of climate change and human impact on the ocean. So I was there in early conversations of really the museum had to think about its role in that larger conversation of, you know, what do we want to say about climate change? If anything, how do we want our museum physical space, but also intellectual space to be used as part of that conversation? So as the director of education, um, I was kind of advocating for, you know, let's let's enter the discussion because I, I think as a maritime museum, it was important that we address uh, climate change as an issue, but how do we do that in a way that really fosters dialogue? Um, and uh, working with the artists to kind of hear their objectives um, and how to translate that uh, for our visitors in a way that was an experiential learning opportunity, but also a space for reflection on, on this issue. So um, I played a lot of roles, had a lot of hats, but um, that's kind of the, the biggest snapshot of, of my role. So how is climate change impacting the Gulf of Maine and Maine's coastline at large? Yeah, that's a huge question. Um, you know, I think a lot of people probably hear the the headline that's that's really easy to encapsulate that story of the Gulf of Maine is is the fastest warming body in the global ocean and and that is scientifically accurate but also an oversimplification. Um, so what I've been able to learn because part of this exhibit process and planning with the artist team was also we met with scientists at you know Bigelow Labs, we met with um, Maine Coast Fishermen Association to make sure that we're we're hearing all sides of kind of this complex issue of climate change. And, and kind of what I'm learning is we know a lot, but we don't know enough to really understand why um, the Gulf is warming. We know human activity and behavior plays a role in it, um, but kind of what we're doing and how it's precip precipitating change in the Gulf is really complex. Um, so, you know, the movement of currents and impacts the movement of plankton, which impacts the movement of whales. And it's all um, it's all connected, uh, but also we haven't quite figured out how to capture all the data, which is kind of what you see in the headlines. Like, this is true. And the other side is saying, well, no, this is true, but both can be true, but we don't really understand why. Um, so, yeah, I mean... In terms of, of the warming ocean and the acidification that we're seeing and the impact on the ecosystem. What are activists doing to prevent or mitigate the effects of climate change, to spread awareness about the issues arising from it, or even counter those concerned about climate change? Yeah, I mean, I think you really have to define the word activist. Like, what do you mean by that, really? Um, so there's activists in all forms of disciplines. So there's, you know, with the sea change uh, exhibit, you know, the Gulf of Maine Eco Arts team consider themselves activists, but they are, they're also artists, they're creators, um, they're storytellers. So that's one form of activism and what they see themselves as trying to prevent and mitigate the effects of climate change is to really offer an opportunity for people to create that personal connection 
to the effects of climate change. Um, so there's imagery in the in the exhibit of you know uh, flooding due to um, really severe weather events to um, you know what's the effect of agriculture so looking beyond just like and not trying to paint fisheries as the villain because there's lots of complexities so they're trying to kind of show through a creative lens you know human impact but then also inspire hope saying like you know we can change this and they do that by showcasing the beauty of uh, the gulf of maine and it's and all the creatures that live there in this really immersive way and then so active that's one way to be an activist i think we're working really closely with a lot of youth activists here in Maine. Uh, so we have a panel coming up where um, some youth leaders can kind of talk about what they're doing and how they're trying to advocate for their generation, but also the generation above them who are in control of policy. So, um, so I think, yeah, it's spreading. It's really kind of what is your personal hook? How do you want to act? to advocate uh, for a change in, in, in connection to the climate. We've sort of touched on this a little bit, uh, the tension between residents of Maine's coastline, specifically fishermen and lobstermen and activists and scientists. And this is something that um, is a tale maybe as old as time here in Maine or has been around for a while. So how are these two seemingly opposing sides working together to overcome sort of their differences? Yeah. Um... That's that's the golden question right there. Uh, so how do you how do you make effective change um, that integrates so many different perspectives, so many different opinions? Um, but again, I think it comes back to ideally everyone wants the same thing. We want healthy fisheries uh, for a healthy economy. We want a healthy ocean for healthy waters um, and just earth health. Um, in human health. So yeah, that I think that tension that builds is um, between, you know, traditional fishing communities, Maine's coastline, and then activists and scientists is not, is maybe there's a lack of empathy in that conversation, a lack of, let's, you know, let's set our mission and our objective aside and let's maybe see if there's anything we can learn from the other side without judgment. Um, so some things that I've learned, we recently did a panel here uh, at the museum um, that feature, featured uh, Dr. Nick Record, who is a senior research scientist at Biblo Labs. And his work is all about um, kind of analyzing big data, um, forecasting patterns in ocean phenomena. And uh, something that I was really struck by in, in his work and his some of his writings is you know, what do we not know and what are the biases in science that prevents us from understanding what's going on? And and he was even saying, like, I have strong empathy of, of fishing communities because, you know, they, they have the lived anecdotal experience and knowledge that may, may be at odds with the scientific community or what the activists are looking to from the scientific community as evidence for their argument. Um, but a, it can be as simple as like our algorithms, our scientific processes just aren't, they're human made and they're not, they're not complex enough to understand this complex issue. Um, so that is a really big answer with an absolutely, or really big response with no answer or solution. It's just, we need to continue making progress in our scientific approach. We need to listen to kind of the lived um, anecdotal experience from fishing communities, you know, as the generations go by and they experience change on the water and in their in their business to inform the policies that we're making, to inform at the, you know, the government, state or federal level that, you know, the policies that were that we're passing are informed. Um, from many voices. And, you know, there could be a, an awesome policy that really protects that one species of fish that it's trying to protect, um, but it might be harming another species, you know, up or down the food chain uh, without knowing that. So that's kind of, um, you know, I think there's there's tension because there's, there's pieces of the puzzle we just don't understand yet as humans. Um, so hopefully we'll figure that out eventually. So how can people become activists to help stop or mitigate the effects of climate change? And what can everyday people do? 
be informed. I mean, I think that's the answer for a lot of um, national and global conversations right now is just take the time to read beyond the headline, take the time even beyond the article, right? Uh, fact check um, what you're reading, understand the source from which it's coming from um, and continue asking why, like, why do you say that? Where do you get that information? Um, Excellent. Thank you so much, Sarah. The exhibit sounds great. I encourage anybody watching this to head on over to the Maine Maritime Museum and check it out. Sarah, do you have anything you want to get out there? Anything you want to say? Uh, this is your sort of free speech moment. Ooh, free speech moment. Yes. So I think just echoing what I just said, um, to be a good citizen, you got to be informed, put the effort in and um, go to museums, go to panels, go to go to the lectures. Um, anywhere where you can learn more about an issue that you're passionate about, whether that information goes with or against what you, your assumptions are, that's that's learning and that's amazing to do. Um, in terms of plugging some things, where you can get that done here at Maine Maritime Museum is we do have a both a lecture series that features some of the scientists and ongoing research um, on issues of climate change in the Gulf of Maine. We also have a panel series that kind of discusses more um, kind of the social and, and cultural impacts of climate change here in, in Maine. So, you know, how are fishing communities um, dealing mentally with mental health in terms of change? How are youth kind of coming together for activism? So you can find all of those on our website, information on those programs, including um, the exhibit at uh, mainmaritimemuseum.org. And I encourage you to come out and, and visit us. Excellent. Thank you so much, Sarah. I appreciate it. Thank you.